Hello everyone, thank you for coming on this beautiful Wednesday evening for another fantastic Wellness Wednesday. Uh, today we're going to be covering the seven secrets to health and better healing. I think that some of these might be familiar to you, I would hope so, and I think some of them might be uh, new and surprising. So before we get into it, I just want to let you guys know that if anything I say this evening uh, resonates with you and makes sense, and you guys want to implement it in the lives of, of yourself or your family members, then we'll have some time for Q&A after the, the meeting, and we'll be able to let you know exactly how to make this part of your life. Okay, so just be ready for that. Uh, we'll go ahead and dive in. So, secret number one, sick care versus health care. It's vital that you guys know the difference. So let me give you a little scenario to illustrate my point. You wake up on a beautiful morning like today, sun is shining, the birds are singing, you're full of energy. What's the first thing you do? I'm going to call my medical doctor. No. No, uh, when do you call your medical doctor? When you're sick. Okay, that's a call that you make when you are in trouble and you need a, a helping hand. Okay, so what is commonly referred to in this country as a healthcare system is really a sick care system. It's, it's based on treating disease and it's very reactive. So I just want to make something very clear. Uh, this is not an anti-medicine lecture. Uh, I really appreciate the work that my colleagues in, in different professions do. And I tell people all the time, if you have a bone sticking out of your leg, don't come to my office. Okay, that's what emergency rooms are for. Those guys and gals are highly trained and that's their specialty is emergency care and trauma management. You get into a pickle, uh, you have a bone sticking out of your leg, etc. The emergency room is a place for you. So we have in this country what people keep referring to as a health care crisis. And I would argue that it's really not a health care crisis. Medical technology is better than it's ever been. The training that uh, doctors and nurses receive is better than it's ever been. And we have more specialties than ever. So I would say that it's not a healthcare crisis, it's more of an attitude crisis. And let me unpack that a little bit. Uh, I recognize that we have been led to believe that we are at the mercy of someone or something and that we don't really have any say over our own health or whether we are healthy people or sick people. And I'm going to point out in this evening's talk that that's, that's really not the case. We have a lot, of, a lot of control. So I'm not sure if this looks familiar to you guys, uh, hopefully not, but the reality is for many, many people in our country this is dinner. And so, you know, we have here a, a statistic from the CDC. Number one cause of death in the U.S. is cardiovascular disease. This is what we call a lifestyle disease. And by lifestyle, we mean that it is preventable. And if you have it, you don't need to lose hope because many of the lifestyle diseases are easily managed or reversible based on the decisions that you make day to day. So I have a little bonus secret for you guys. I know this is the seven secrets, but it's really seven and a half secrets. And the bonus secret is that oftentimes the intervention that's supposed to help us ends up killing us. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys remember, there was a drug that was put out on the market uh, a number of years ago called Vioxx. This was a pain medication that was used to treat arthritis and various other minor uh, ailments. 
and it killed over 60,000 people. So I'll just let that number soak in for a little bit. Uh, one drug, 60,000 human beings left early because they took this drug. This is a statistic from the Journal of the American Medical Association that says that uh, around 100,000 people die every year in the U.S. from properly prescribed drugs. I, I was doing my research for this talk and I came across this quote. This is from Dr. Graham. He's a senior scientist at, at the FDA and he basically says if another Vioxx hit the market, the FDA is not going to protect us from that. The way the FDA is structured, they are not able to uh, effectively protect the U.S. public from a, a drug disaster like Vioxx. And so basically, we wouldn't know until it was too late. So this is my bonus secret here, the real number one cause of death. I mentioned cardiovascular disease earlier in the, in the message. That was around 600,000 people. If you look at this number down here, almost a million people every year uh, die from Western medicine. So we have at the top adverse drug reactions and medical errors, 420,000 people a year. This one is uh, really heartbreaking to me. Bed sores. 115,000 people a year die from bed sores. And just to let you guys know why this is so upsetting to me, bed sores are uh, a sign of someone who's been neglected. Someone who's in a, a hospital or a care home who is not being attended to and is just... Uh, lying in one place for so long that their skin begins to rot. I'm going to spend too much time on this because it is a little bit dark, but I want you guys to know that this is, this is not well, well published or well known, but this is, this is fact. These are hard numbers. And we're talking about almost one million people a year. On this graph we have a lot of huge numbers as far as dollars that I think are completely irrelevant. Because at the end of the day it's not about dollars, it's about lives. So we'll talk a little bit about economics of the sick care system. And you know the U.S. today we're approaching a point where uh, one out of every four dollars that you make goes towards your health care or someone else's health care. So that's approaching 25% of GDP. I would argue that the problem is not a lack of money. Okay? Two trillion dollars a year, that's plenty of money. And, and what do we get for that vast investment? Well, we get a health ranking towards the bottom of developed countries. So, I'll give you a little hint, there's really not all that many developed countries in the world, and so to be number 30, 37, uh, while we spend more money than anyone, and we're by, down by the bottom of the list, something's wrong, okay, something's broken here. So the sick care business is reactive, something happens, Something bad comes across our table, and so we react to it. And that is the nature of our, of our health care system. It's reactive. There are a lot of uh, my colleagues, chiropractors, medical doctors, naturopaths, nurses, who are looking for answers to this problem and are turning towards a wellness model, which is proactive. That's doing things to help yourself before you have a problem so that you can stay out of the sick care system. And I really think that the future of medicine is uh, going to be geared towards wellness, prevention, and an educated and informed uh, medical consumer. So I'm really happy to be a part of that because I, hon I honestly believe that that's the future of medicine. That's where we're going. We just have to help get there. Okay. 
second secret is the truth about pain. So when I was putting this uh, lecture together, my, my wife really did not like this picture, but I think it illustrates nicely that pain is a subjective experience, meaning everyone goes through pain a little differently, people have different tolerances for pain, and different perceptions of pain. Okay, so we're going to unpack this a little bit. If I had a magic pill that I could give you with no side effects, I know we just talked all about adverse drug reactions, no side effects, and I could guarantee that if you took the pill you would never experience pain again in your life, would you take it? So I get a, a lot of yeses. And that's completely understandable. A pain is not a fun thing to go through. But I'm going to explain why it's a necessary part of our human experience. So say you took the pill, and now pain is not part of your human experience. And you leave Wellness Wednesday, and you step off the curb outside into the parking lot, and you break your ankle. But you don't know it's broken, because you don't feel pain, so you just keep on going. And you get closer to your car and you step on a rusty nail. And so on and so on. I think you see where I'm going with this, guys. Um, pain is our body's alarm system. And that's the way that we know that something's wrong. So it's not any fun to go through. And it's not any fun to live with. But we need to really put it in its place and understand that it's, it's necessary uh, for life. So another way to illustrate this point is, you know, I'm a, I'm a very healthy guy. If I went into the back and got one of my heavy textbooks and dropped it on my foot, I would be in a lot of pain. But I wouldn't necessarily be unhealthy. On the flip side, we have people walking around every day in our communities who are very sick with things like cardiovascular disease, uh, autoimmune conditions, cancer. They don't have any pain, but they're very, very sick people. So we just need to really understand that pain has its place and that pain is not an indicator of sickness or health. So I kind of alluded to this point earlier, but pain is like an alarm. It's like our smoke alarm in our house. And if all we do is uh, try to cover up the pain or suppress symptoms, then that's like taking the batteries out of your smoke alarm because you don't like the sound. Okay, so now you don't have the sound, it's not annoying you, but you also aren't aware of the fire in your house. Okay, so our third secret, this is one of my favorites as a chiropractor, is the role of the nervous system. So the nervous system is the master control system of our bodies and it communicates through our brain and spinal cord to every single cell in our body. Around 10 trillion cells, mas o menos. That's a lot of communication going on. And literally nothing we experience as human beings happens without the nervous system. Everything we see, taste, touch, smell, here, our emotions, everything runs through the nervous system. It is vital, vital. So a little exercise in logic for you guys. Um, fact number one, a living body is self-healing and self-regulating. What do I mean by that? Well, I don't have to tell my heart to beat. I don't have to tell my hormones and my endocrine system to function. If I were to cut my finger, I don't have to tell my body to start clotting the blood and healing that cut. That happens automatically. That happens on a super conscious level, completely disconnected from any thought or influence of our own. We were created to heal ourselves. So a living body is self-regulating and self-healing. We just learned earlier that nothing happens without the nervous system and so the conclusion that I draw from these two facts is that if we mess with the nervous system 
and we impede its function, then we're going to interfere with the body's ability to heal itself. Pretty simple, right? That brings us to our fourth secret, and that's understanding subluxation. So subluxation is a mouthful, it's kind of a, a tongue twister, so to speak, and you might have heard chiropractors in the past talking about subluxation. Let me explain very simply what we're talking about. So the uh, nervous system is the only organ system in the body that's encased in solid bone. Your skull and your spine protect your brain and your spinal cord. And it's not a coincidence that these two organ systems live inside a fortress. They are vital to our human experience. So a uh, subluxation is uh, an area where there's interference in the nervous system and it's not a mechanical issue like a rusty hinge that's stuck. It's more of an electrical issue. An easy example is if you've ever had a breaker in your house that was flipped, you know the circuit overloaded, you know maybe your refrigerator shorted out, it overloads the circuit and it flips the breaker. So now there's no juice flowing to that part of the house. A subluxation is very similar to that. There's a interference in nerve flow uh, between the brain and the body or the body and the brain. So when we have misalignments in our spinal cord, or in our spine rather, then the, the spinal nerves that exit between the vertebrae uh, lose their ability to communicate at 100% and then we have a subluxation. So a real important point that I want to kind of drill home for you guys is that you can have subluxations and you can have interference in nervous system communication without pain. Uh, I think one thing that I hear all the time in my office is, you know, well, I've never been to a chiropractor before because I've never had back problems. I've never had back pain. Pain relief is a nice side effect of chiropractic care, and it's something that chiropractors are really known for, uh, and I have no problem with that. We do great work with people who are really hurting. But the real meat of our profession is much, much deeper than just pain relief. And, and it really comes down to the body's ability to heal at 100%. So these problems can happen without pain. Okay, and people ask me, well, how do I get subluxations? Lifestyle stress. Which brings us to secret number five which is understanding the role of stress. So when I say the word stress, most people think of, you know, I'm running around at a million miles an hour, I have all these errands to do, I have to work, I have to take care of my kids, I have a sick dog, and people start to get really tense and their shoulders come up into their ears and they're just really stressed out. Kind of like our friend here, okay? That's one aspect of stress, but I'm going to inform you guys that there's really three facets to the stress picture. So lifestyle stress is ever-present, it never goes away, and there's uh, three elements, and you can have positive stress and negative stress. So just to be really clear, if you have zero stress, then you're like this poor little fella here. And that's not where we want to be. Okay? So a stress-free life is really kind of a myth, unless you want to be like our buddy the gerbil here. Okay, so I'm going to start with physical stress. This is something that is pretty easy for people to wrap their minds around. Um, some positive examples would be exercise, a nice healthy stretch. If any of you guys have ever 
uh, worked out or stretched your muscles, you can feel a little bit of a burn there. And you can tell that those muscles are being stretched. So they're under stress. But that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. On the negative side, we have things that people would probably more often associate with stress, like a car wreck, a broken bone, things like that. So that's the first element. The second element is chemical stress. And so I, I include my friends, Jackie and Ulysses here, under the positive side. So if you guys don't know the green ingredient, it's a fantastic restaurant downtown. Uh, you can get their, their food at the farmer's market on Saturdays. And it is a wonderful example of positive chemical stress. These are uh, healthy, organic, life-giving foods that will literally be put to use rebuilding your body. Now on the negative side, we have things like pesticides, preservatives, Roundup, smog, the list goes on and on. There are uh, around 84,000 chemicals approved for use in the United States and only about 3,000 of them have ever been studied for safety. So chemical stress is something that as a population we are under more pressure from chemicals and toxins than at any point in human history. So the third one is something that a lot of people don't consider and that is emotional stress. So let me illustrate this for you guys. If you've ever known someone or maybe you've had this experience yourself, if you've ever known someone who was in a toxic relationship and as an outside observer, you're watching this situation and you're watching your friend or your family member and they can be eating right and exercising and staying adjusted, but as long as they're in that relationship, you can watch their health start to decline. And as soon as they extricate themselves from that, you can start to see the life come back into them. So that's a really relatable example of uh, a negative emotional stress. Let me paint another picture for you on the positive end. Say it's the holidays, you've been away for a while, you come into town to visit your relatives, and you walk in the house, and everyone's so happy to see you, and there's a wonderful meal laid out, and there's a lot of time uh, for visiting and fellowship, and you can just feel the warmth in that room. And, and it fills you with life and restores you. That is positive emotional stress. That's the kind of relationship that we really want to seek out and maintain because it's a life-giving relationship. So, just to recap, we have three dimensions, physical, chemical, and emotional. Alright, secret number six. This is one of my favorites. Obviously, as a chiropractor, I love sharing the chiropractic vision with people. People ask me all the time, well, what is a chiropractic vision? The chiropractic vision is really about creating health. Teaching people to be truly healthy and to get healthier as they go along through education and lifestyle and, and choices. Uh, it is much deeper than just suppressing symptoms or treating disease. We want to create healthy, vital people who are adding value to their communities and their families on a daily basis. And we want to bring some balance to the medical system in our country. We want to bring a little bit of proactive behavior and wellness to the medical system. So how do we do that? Well, we help people to get rid of subluxations. These could be subluxations caused by a poor diet. These could be subluxations caused by 
uh, highly stressful work environment. And these could be the good old fashioned spinal subluxations that are putting that hitch in your get along and keeping you from getting out and exercising like you want to. Um, chiropractic is personalized. No two cases are the same. And in my clinic, I really get a kick out of uh, working with people and I never have the same day twice. Even the same person on different days can be a completely different presentation. So we customize care and we help people to learn how to do things for themselves so that they can be truly healthy. This is one of my favorites here. Educate people on how to live so that they can stay out of my office. One of my favorite things to do. Uh, I know that once people understand the chiropractic vision that they will come to see me proactively. I love to see people who come in and tell me, Doc, I feel fantastic. What do we need to do today? That makes me so happy because that's a person that really gets what we're doing and is being proactive and solving problems before they get to a really uh, ugly, painful stage. So this is kind of what we're doing tonight on Wellness Wednesday, giving you the tools to take care of yourself. One of my favorite things to do. So secret number seven is a little bit of a touchy issue, but you know, doctor means teacher. And so I'm just gonna lay it on you tonight, okay? And and I leave this secret for last because I think it is maybe the most important. And if you only take one thing from this talk, I want you to understand the role that you have in your own health. So secret number seven is taking responsibility. So a scourge in my community and in many communities across the country is type two diabetes. Chances are, if you're here in this room, you or someone you love is suffering from type 2 diabetes. So in forward-thinking, progressive, uh, cutting-edge medical circles, diabetes isn't even considered a disease. It's kind of strange. If it's not a disease, then what is it? It's a choice. It's a choice. And it's the little things that people do day in and day out, the bad habits or the good habits that pile up and snowball and either create a truly healthy, vibrant, abundant person or someone who is sick, tired, and miserable. It's very rare that someone comes across one thing that changes their life and changes the outlook of their health. It is much more common for people to start to do little things day in and day out that start to pile up and really changes their health picture. So I talked about a choice. Maybe you woke up this morning and you were looking to get some breakfast. What are you going to choose? Are you going to choose the delicious donuts? Are you going to choose the delicious berries? They're both delicious. They both taste fantastic. What's the difference? The difference is, one, your body will take as food and as medicine and will use to replenish and rebuild your, your systems. And the other is poisoning you. So it's a choice. And I think it's a really empowering message to know that you have the control over your health picture. It's not your genetics. It's not your family history. It's not your environment. It's your choices. And so you don't need to feel like a victim. You need to feel like a victor. Whatever you're facing, whatever you're going through, you can have an influence on that situation. And I know that taking responsibility has made a huge difference in my own life. And when I see my, my patients 
that decide to make a commitment to themselves and take responsibility, their outlook changes also. So kind of along the same lines of taking responsibility, I want to ask you guys, who is responsible for the health of you and your family? Who has your best interests in mind? Is it the government? I know this is a hot topic right now. There's a lot of turmoil in Washington, D.C., and there are a lot of really screwy things going on in our nation's capital and in state capitals all across the country. Uh, Health care is, is really a widely debated issue right now. But I'm going to tell you right now, uh, it is my strong, strong belief that the government does not have your best interests in mind. So if the government isn't looking out for you, then who's looking out for you? Is it a third-party insurance company? Third-party payer? A for-profit, publicly traded business? Are they the ones who have your best interests in mind? I don't think so. What about Big Pharma? What about Merck? The people who brought us Vioxx? What about the people who are manufacturing opioid painkillers that are addicting our country and destroying families and lives at an unprecedented rate. So if they're not going to take care of you, who's going to take care of you? It's you. It's your responsibility. And the beautiful thing about this message is it's really simple to do. And we would like to partner with you to, to teach you and give you the tools to really create health and be vibrant, abundant, productive members of society so that you can do the things that you love to do and do things with your family. It's not about me doing all the work. It's about a partnership and us here in the office giving you the tools and the information to make good decisions and stay out of the sick care system. So maybe you've listened to what I have to say and, and it resonated with you and, and you're thinking, well, Doc, it sounds great, but it's too expensive. Or I don't have time. Or I live in the middle of nowhere and I can't come in and see you. Trust me, I've heard them all. And I always say the same thing. You're worth it. Some of you in this room I know. Some of you I don't know. But I know you're worth it. And anybody out there in digital land that I'm reaching with this message, I may not know you, but I know you're worth it. And I honestly believe that you were created for a unique purpose that only you can fulfill and that you have talents and abilities that no one else has and so I know that this takes a lot of work I know that it takes a lot of thought and I know that it takes a monetary investment but you're worth it so just in review we're gonna go over the seven secrets real quick we had this the difference between sick care and health care we put pain in its place. We explain the role of the nervous system as the master controller of your body. We explain subluxation. Unpack that big complicated word that really just means interference. I explained to you about lifestyle stress and the three dimensions, physical, emotional, and chemical. I told you about the chiropractic vision. A vision where wellness has a place in our healthcare system and where there's a balance between emergency care, reactionary care, and proactive wellness care. I shared with you an often 
uh, swept aside secret, which is personal responsibility. And I hope that I've empowered you with the message that you're in control. So, I just want to take a minute to uh, talk about time. When I went to chiropractic school, I did that in Port Orange, Florida. And it was a really great place to go to school. My apartment complex was full of uh, students on the second floor and retired people on the ground floor. And as you can imagine, there were some beautiful days. I was coming home from school and I stopped to talk with my neighbor, uh, about 87 years old at the time. The guy could really spin a yarn. And we ended up shooting the breeze in the breezeway for a little over an hour. And when we finally were about to part ways for the evening, he said, Well, you can take a man's money, and that's no big deal. They print millions of dollars every day. You can always make more money. But if you take a man's time, that's something he will never get back. And so I hope our time together has been valuable to you. And I hope that we can work together to really create health and abundance in your life. So thank you all for your time. And know that I don't take it for granted. So as I mentioned in the beginning, if you guys have any questions, uh, want to know how to get set up with us and, and make this wellness model part of your life and the life of your families, we have some information here. We'd love to have you in the office. Uh, for anybody watching at home, uh, we would love to have you here. Come on down and let us show you what the future of healthcare looks like. Thanks again, everybody.